What are my thoughts after more than six months in the villages? That's coming up next. Welcome in, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. Oh my gosh, I have so much to say today. I hope that this is a fun and interesting video for you because I'm talking about a subject I'm pretty doggone passionate about, and that is what has it been like for my first six months in the villages? But here's the thing. It dawned on me a couple of days ago that I need to do a six month update on life here in the villages. You know, I moved in last spring and then I realized it's been nine months since I've moved in and honestly I'm not kidding you it feels like five minutes. I have been walking around all morning trying to figure out how I have been here for nine months. It truly seems like five minutes. It has gone by so very fast and you know what? I have some thoughts. If you're new here I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope you'll consider subscribing before you leave and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want all the good stuff, you might want to consider signing up for my Sunday morning email newsletter. It comes out every Sunday morning and it lands right in your inbox. It is super fun. It's one of the most popular things about my channel. What I do is I kind of go through the whole week and list all the good things that I found, whether it's a great piece of information, a new recipe, something that I bought and I loved and I think is a good value. Whatever I would tell you if we were together sitting by the pool, sipping iced tea, having a great time. That's what goes in the Sunday morning email newsletter. The link is in the description box down below to sign up. It's super easy, super fun, super free. I think you're going to love it. Now that I've been in the villages for not only six months, but nine months, what are my thoughts? And I'll have to tell you, gosh, with the exception of one thing, they're all good. And not only am I still as in love with living in the village as I was in the beginning, it's as if my appreciation and just admiration for what they've been able to do here has grown because I have a broader depth of understanding of how everything functions here in the villages. I am an absolute fan of this community for so very many reasons. First, I want to talk about what the developers have done here in the villages. Then I want to talk about what the residents have done here in the villages. And then a few things about about what has worked for me and then just one little thing that I'm not a fan of but it's not specific to the villages it's it's across the nation and I just wanted to shout it out first of all I am continually impressed with how well run this community is and it is a huge community there's over a hundred thousand homes here right now and to drive from the villages up north the first section that was developed to all the way down south where they're now building takes more than half an hour. I mean, the place is huge. So if you think of it as a gated golf course community, that is way small. It is like 50 gated golf course communities all stacked up together. There really is so much to do here. And don't be fooled because I said gated golf course community. Golf is just one of the wide range of activities that you can do here in the village. It's almost ridiculous. All the things that are available to do. I am continually impressed with how well this is run, how clean it is, how friendly and wonderful anyone who works with the villages is, how safe it feels, how convenient everything is. They really have done an extraordinary job of building a community that meets the needs of everyone that lives here. And when I say that, I'm not kidding you. There is so much to do in the villages. I have scratched maybe one-tenth of one percent of all the things there are to do. The villages has a very, very active lifestyle. All Although if you're not active, you're gonna love it here too. It really is a place to go if you want a very safe, very clean, well-organized, well-managed community. It really does meet all those needs. Now, one of the things the Villages is known for is all the clubs. When you become a resident of the Villages, you can open up a club based on your interest. It doesn't matter if it's bird watching or filmmaking or photography or ceramics ceramics or woodworking or hiking or kayaking or pickleball or softball or beach volleyball. I am telling you what, there are over 3,000 clubs here in the villages. I have not come across 
a single topic that doesn't have at least one club and a number of different classes or meetings throughout the week. It's crazy. In addition, they come out with a weekly calendar every week. Oh, and let me go grab it right now. I'll be right back with it. So here's the little weekly newsletter that comes out and you can pick these up at any of the rec centers and gosh, there's, there's gotta be over 50 rec centers here throughout the villages. They come out with this every week and inside of this is the calendar for every single rec center. In addition, there's also a listing of every single club. This is how I've hooked up with a lot of the clubs that I have gone to their meetings or gone to some of their events. This is a wealth of information and this comes out every single Friday. For instance, you guys know I am an avid kayaker. I just went out last week with the Villages Canoe and Kayak Club for my first event with them. I had so much fun. It was so great to be with another group of people who were as passionate about kayaking as I was. We had a great time. We saw probably, oh, 10 or 12 manatee, maybe 13 or 14 gators and including some really big ones, a ton of turtles, of course, a number of birds, you know, all kinds of different birds. We had so much fun and it's all available as a resident to the villages. There's like a nominal fee for the canoe and kayak club. I think it's $15 a year. Then you just join up for whatever activities they post. It's the same way with other clubs. Another club that I'm looking at or another activity that I'm looking at is archery. They have an archery 101 club. I've talked to two girlfriends so far that have done it. They say it's a blast. And now those gals are going to get their own bow so they can start doing archery on their own. That's definitely a club I'm going to be looking into. So anything that you're looking for as far as any type of act or activity or craft or hobby, whatever, there are people here doing that and they want to meet you. It really is so much fun. Now you might be asking, all right, Kimberly, we know you're a little spiritual, a little woo woo. What about that side of you? And here's the interesting thing. There's a huge group here in the villages that have that same passion as I do. As a matter of fact, I have one girlfriend that I met through a friend, her name is Lottie, and she sent me an entire list of all the spiritual clubs and like Abraham Hicks clubs, Law of Attraction clubs, all these things. And my girlfriend Lori and I, we spent a couple of weeks going to all the different meetings for those different clubs, and I've identified a few different clubs that I want to continue to go to. So even something as, you know, left of center or right of center, I'm not sure what you would call it as spiritual leanings or law of attraction. Lottie teaches a law of attraction course here in the villages and she's going to continue to do that is available here. It really is such a great place to be in if you have a lot of interest and you want to pursue them. So I have nothing but praise for the villages developers because they have made this such a well-run, well-functioning, beautiful, well-equipped community for all types of interests. And that's one thing that's important to me. I like to do stuff and I have lots of interests and I want to continue to do all these interests. And this has really broadened my horizons because gosh, where would I have thought to take archery in the other places I've lived? I, I wouldn't have thought of it. And now I have it here. I can sign up for the class. I can learn archery. I mean, and it's just all good. From my perspective, the developers of the villages have really done an extraordinary job of building a community that runs really well. The amenity fees to cover all of these activities are really quite low. I think they're they're still under $200 a month. Now, I'm a renter. I did not buy my home here. I'm renting my home. Because I am a renter, I can do all the things that a resident does. In other words, there's no difference between being a resident and being a renter. You can still attend all the parties, you can still attend all the events, all the meetings, all the clubs, everything. In addition, there is music at all the squares every night that you can go to. I mean, it really, you couldn't do all the things that there is to do. And I keep adding more things to my list and I still feel like I'm missing out on so many things that I'll probably do in the future.
Now I want to talk about the residents themselves. And this is an interesting perspective, or at least I think my perspective is different. I haven't heard anyone talk about this, but it's what I noticed right away when I moved to the villages because it happened to me over and over and over again. And that is that somewhere along the lines, and maybe it started way up north when this community first got going, but there is a deep, rooted, pervasive culture of kindness in the villages. And I'm not kidding you. It is kindness in every direction. It's almost as though you wouldn't want to be unkind or you wouldn't want to be short or you wouldn't want to be rude. It's almost like it's just not done. It's the weirdest thing. It feels so good. And I appreciate appreciate it so much because I know that that's not the case in other parts of the country, maybe other parts of the world right now, a culture of kindness. And I don't know how it was implemented, but it might be just that people were, you know, retiring from their careers when the villages first started. It was more of a retirement community. Now it's kind of a mixture. There are some people that are still working, some people that are retired. Pretty much everybody is 55 or older, but a lot of people are still working. They either commute to a job or they fly to a job or they work out of their homes. Like I'm still working. I'm still doing my YouTube channel. So I work out of my home. But the culture of kindness is real and it's tangible and I see it all the time. I want to give you an example and I haven't shared this before. <laughs> And it's a little bit of a thing, a kerfluffle that happened to me not too long after I moved here. I have a dog and a cat. You guys know Dex and Lucy. They're my little loves. Dex is the cat. Lucy is the dog. Not too long, it was like a few weeks after I moved here, Dex got out and he vanished, my cat. And I was devastated, just devastated. I didn't talk about it on my channel. It was one of those kind of things I just held close to my vest. Dex has my heart. I mean, if any animal has my heart. It's that animal. He is so dear to me. And he got out and he was gone and he was gone and he was gone. Luckily, we have a Facebook community here in the village I live in. Most villages have at least one Facebook community. I mean, there's so many groups and so many different ways to connect here. We have a Facebook group for my little village. Well, I posted a picture of ducks and description and this and that. And the days went by and the days went by and all of a sudden I get a phone call from a lady who says, I think your cat's in my backyard. And so long story short, he was, he was in the ravine behind her backyard. You know what's else in the ravine behind her backyard? Gators, bobcats, predators. I mean, all kinds of critters. There is wildlife around this place like crazy. It is not unusual to get a gator sighting in the villages. We just had one up at Brownwood Square about a week ago. So it is a wildlife community. We have lots of wildlife. And I knew my cat was back in that ravine with all those creatures. And I'll tell you, it was... <laughs> It was a few days before I was able to get a sighting of my cat living in that ravine. He was living in a drainage pipe. Well, so I knew he was back there. I couldn't find him. I couldn't see him, but I heard reports about him. I was up at Brownwood Square with Lori and her husband, Brian, listening to music one night, and I get a message on my phone that says, hey, we think we see your cat, and this is where we are. They put the address, and I ran out of that square and got in, you know, I got in my golf cart. I I ran over to where they were, not before stopping at my house to get the crate and a towel and other things that I would need. This couple was in their golf cart. I didn't know them. They were in their golf cart and they had spied my cat and saw him run back into the ravine. They sat there in their golf cart waiting for me to show up. And I said, thank you so much. You know, I grabbed the towel that I was going to grab the cat with and I go back there and I had to sit in the backyard of these people's homes, not the people in the golf cart, but another resident home and wait for Dex to feel safe enough to come up and crawl into my lap, which he eventually did. So I wrapped him in a towel and I started walking out to my golf cart. And you know what? That couple that first texted me an hour ago still was there waiting for me to see if I got Dex to help me if I needed any help. I mean, that is what I'm talking about. The culture of kindness here, and I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. The culture of kindness 
this here is really, really palatable and it is real and it's amazing and you see it all the time. So there's just so much that I want to say about how warm and welcoming this community is. And if you feel like you're going to move in and feel overwhelmed because you're not going to know anybody, that is not an issue. People will chat you up at the pool. They'll chat you up at the square. They'll chat you up at a restaurant. They'll chat you up at the rec center. You will meet friends so easily because people were not born and raised here. They have moved here just like you did and they're looking for friends too. And so what I can say is my experiences here in the villages just has all been good. Now I want to touch on a couple of what I would call maybe negatives or maybe just a little touch of reality about what we're doing here in the villages and how things work. First of all, it is really, really clean. I don't know how they keep it this clean. And sometimes I'll look around and see how incredibly clean and well-maintained this community is and wonder what the heck are our tax dollars going to? Because I know doggone good and well, as soon as I drive out of the villages, it's not going to look this clean. It's not going to be this well-maintained. The streets are not going to be like this. And it makes me wonder where are our tax dollars going? Because I know that we don't pay a whole boatload in amenity fees here. So it's curious to me. I often wonder if we can get the developers of the villages to meet with all the city managers and maybe they can share their experience about how they do it so well and so easily. So here are a couple of downsides or maybe you could call them downsides about the villages that I do want to share. The first is a fact that I knew about and we all know about when we move in the villages. Up north it's a little bit different but down south which is where they're developing now below it's called below 44. 44 is a street that bisects the villages and below 44 most of the development is along the turnpike. In other words that turnpike goes down the state and the villages is developed on either side of that turnpike that land would not be developed otherwise. So I think it's really great that the developers are building out that land because it's an additional tax base for the state and for the counties and land that probably would not have been used anyway. In addition, this land is cheap land because it's borders the turnpike. Now, one of the things that comes with that is traffic noise from that turnpike. So a lot of the communities that are south of 44 are going to be subject to traffic noise. I live in a house south of 44 and I'm quite close to the turnpike. I knew it when I moved in. I accepted it. It was the only thing for me that wasn't absolutely perfect about this house. And the decision that I made when I moved in is that I wasn't going to focus on it because I know what I focus on enhances or increases or becomes bigger. And I had made the decision, I'm not going to focus on it. I put some chimes out back, some beautiful chimes that I love. That's what I focus on. But one thing that I have noticed in the winter, as opposed to the warmer, more humid summer months, is that the traffic noise is more apparent in the winter because there's not that moisture content in the air the air's a little bit thinner so that noise comes in a little bit louder than it does during the more humid months. So me complaining about that would be like someone complaining about buying a house underneath a flight pattern for an airport and then saying, I've got airplane noise, I want to sue. It's like, hello, you knew that was the deal when you moved in. I knew it was the deal when I moved in. And I think anybody that's purchasing a home south of 44 along the turnpike area needs to acknowledge that. I mean, it's one of the things that comes with this development. It's that land along the turnpike. It's a little less expensive for the developers. It's land that wouldn't be used anyway. So it just is. And I'm not going to fuss about it because there are so many wonderful things about living here that it's just almost irrelevant to me. The second thing that I want to talk about, it's a complaint that I have about the villages, but it's a complaint I have about every single town in the United States. And that is the turf. And when I say turf, what I'm talking about is the grass. I am not a a fan of grass. And you may think, well, that's a really ridiculous point, Kimberly, and maybe you're right. However, I don't see the community benefit to grass. Grass has to be mowed. Grass is not native. Grass requires a lot of chemicals to keep it green and pristine looking. It is a lot of maintenance. It's a lot of chemicals on that ground, and it doesn't do 
anything. In other words, you can't eat grass. Grass doesn't have flowers. It doesn't enhance the pollinator population. It doesn't do anything for the birds, nothing. And there's a lot of turf or grass here in the villages. Now I will grant them that as they've gone more down south, they are starting to incorporate a little bit more native landscaping into the developed areas of the villages. Now we have a lot of open spaces, which is all native landscaping. I am a fan of native landscaping. I think that if we all went back to native landscaping and growing gardens or growing flowers or growing fruit or food or vegetables in our lawns instead of grass, everybody's going to be better off. We're going to have free food on our property. We're going to enhance the pollinator population. We're going to enhance the birds. Everything would get better if we went back to native landscaping. Now this is not unique to the villages. Every single community in my mind from what I can see unless they've made a really determined effort to stick with native landscaping they have too much turf. And the chemicals used and the water used and all the labor to keep that grass looking like grass I don't think is worth it. I think we're paying a pretty high price for it. So that's my only complaint and it's certainly not specific to the villages. It's just what we seem to be doing here in the U.S. and I think it's probably time that we grow out of that and start doing something more useful with that land. So that's what I have to say for you about my first nine months in the villages. I honestly cannot tell you how it's gone by this fast. I feel like I just moved in. I haven't even got my closet organized how I want it yet. I have nothing but nice things to say about the villages. I had a completely different perspective or concept about this community before I came to visit. If you're thinking about it, I encourage encourage you to come down for a lifestyle visit or you can do what I did. The lifestyle visits were booked up for a few months. I just got a room in the hotel at Sumter Landing and I spent a few days scoping out the area, finding out what it was all about. For me, it is a fabulous community. If you like people, if you like to do stuff, and even if you like to sit in your home, it's a very, very safe, well-maintained community. And I have nothing but praise for what the developers have done and what the community has done to make this a very safe, very fun, very active, gorgeous community filled with a whole bunch of really kind people. So that's my first six or nine months in the villages. I hope you found this fun, useful, and helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You guys know it just tickles me when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.